Hello, second grade. So today, our learning objective is to understand the importance of working as a community to take care of art tools, materials, and the art room space. So I want you to see what you can discover today. We're gonna to try a variety of different art medias, and I want you to encourage you to try different ways of using this media. So what we're gonna do is start with a large white piece of paper, and I need you to write your name and the day you have art, day A, day B, day C. Flip it over. <clears throat> And you're going to have six different art medias to try. So you need to uh, make sure you have th uh, six spaces. So you could fold your paper, like I could take and um, fold my paper into four boxes, fold it lengthways like this, and then I've gotta get three boxes across, so I kinda wanna bring the two ends over and fold, and the boxes won't be equal. Um, you can, <clears throat> you don't have to fold the paper at all. You could draw the boxes yourself or you don't have to do any of that. You can just kind of stay within your spaces. It's fine. So you're going to do six different media and I want to see, I want you to see what you can come up with. And if you have a discovery and you try something, um, I want you to share that discovery with the people at the table. So if you notice something that works, share with um, people at your table. So the first one that I'm gonna do is crayon. Now everybody's gonna be at a different media rotating through the room, so you might not start with crayon. You might start with marker or paint. So I'm gonna pick one of these boxes and I'm gonna try some different things with crayon. I'm gonna try pushing hard with the crayon, a heavy pressure, I'm gonna try pushing lightly. I'm gonna try overlapping the colors and seeing if I can get them to mix. Um, what kind of shapes can I make? and what colors when they overlap what do they create so like the green and the yellow when they overlap gets a lighter green uh, do I want to add another color and see what what happens when I add a third color and I could take the crayon and use the side of the crayon and see what kind of texture I could create I can make a skinny line I can turn it on its side and make a fat line what can I make from the crayon? So when it's time to rotate, then you'll go to a new media. So then I have markers. <clears throat> if I use the point of the marker, I get a skinny line. If I use the wide part of the marker, I can get a fat line. What if I take an, a second color and touch the first color and they Will they make a third color when they touch like that? Um, what kind of patterns could I make? So if you discover anything new and exciting, share it with your table. See what they, what they, if they can recreate. Colored pencils is another one. With colored pencils at the station, I'm gonna have a sharpener and a paper towel. And because you might need to sharpen your pencil. So the sharpeners have a large and a small hole. You'll use the small hole, push your pencil into that, hold the sharpener over the paper towel, and then push and twist. And there's a little uh, piece of lead stuck in there, so I'm gonna push that out, and now I can sharpen my pencil. And the reason we have the paper towel is to catch the shavings, because you can see the shavings come out of the top of the sharpener. And I want you to go to the sharpener. I don't want you to pull the sharpener to you. I want you to walk around the table and go to the sharpener if you need to use it. And don't spend too much time sharpening. Same with the color pencil. Try pushing hard to make a dark line. Um, try holding it on the side to make a wider line, skinny line. Um, <clears throat> what if you overlap the colors? What, would, what color do you get if you overlap the colors? Um, <clears throat> What can you come up with? Then we have oil pastel. At the oil pastel table, we'll have some paper towels. And with the oil pastels, they're soft. So you can color lightly with them and they kind of look like a crayon. If you color lightly, you can press harder with them and make a heavy, thick coating of oil pastel on your paper. You can take another color and overlap 
and see if you can make a third color. You can take your paper towel, wrap it around your finger and smear the oil pastel. You can smear it and then take another color and color over the top of the smear and see what you get. So try that out. And then for painting, when you're at the painting tables, you're going to get a place mat that goes under your work. And one of the paints that you're going to try is temper cakes. So the temper cakes look like this. You're going to need a water basin. The water basin have teeth at the bottom. That's good to clean your paintbrush off with. And then you're going to have stiff bristle brushes. These look very different than watercolor brushes. And you need a stiff bristle brush so you can get some color out of the temper cake. So if I take this, and that yellow is kind of dirty, so I smeared, <clears throat> I swished my paintbrush around and got some clean water, swished it around again and got some clean water so that I can clean off this yellow. And if I swirl around a lot, I can get a nice dark heavy color. But if I don't swirl around very much, just a little bit like this, I get more of a water color, not a dark, bright, vibrant color, more of a watery color. And again, try to overlap the colors and see what you come up with. Now we're working as a community. So if I take my paintbrush and I mix all of these together, how does that affect my community second grade? What happens? How does this affect everyone at the table and everyone who comes to this table after me? Good answers. So now I'm gonna take a third color and even the ones that don't have any paint on the bottom, if you swirl around the edge, you can still get some paint. Overlap the color, see what you can come up with. If I take my paintbrush, you're, there'll be wide paintbrushes too. You can try a wider paintbrush, wide and skinny. Take your paintbrush and touch dots and see what happens if the colors bleed together. <clears throat> and then always use the teeth at the bottom of the water basin to clean your paintbrush off. And then the final paint that we're going to try today is watercolor. So you're going to get two watercolor paint brushes. These are very different than the temper cakes. These are stiff bristle brushes for the temper cakes. These are soft bristles for the watercolor because we don't want to use the stiff bristles for the watercolor because it will um, ruin the paint inside the trays. And again, if I take my paintbrush and I just go back and forth over all these colors and I mix them together, how does that affect the community, our classroom? Everybody else who's gonna use this paint, how does that, how does that work? And you're gonna have two sizes of paintbrushes again. So when you use watercolor, you have to get like a puddle of water on top. So I dip my paintbrush in the water and I just pull it across the edge of the oval, just the bristles, pull it across the edge of the oval to get a puddle on top. <clears throat> and then gently touch the paint with the bristles of my paintbrush. I'm not jamming my paintbrush down into it, making the metal touch the paint. I'm just having the bristles touch. And then try and see, like if you have a lot of water, make a lighter color, then go back, touch the paint quite a few times gently with the bristles of your brush, and then make a darker color and have those two overlap and run into each other and what happens. If you touch the darker color to the lighter color, what happens? Does it bleed and run together? Okay, um, use this smaller paintbrush and see what happens when you paint with watercolor using a small paintbrush. Can you have skinnier lines and more detail? If you press down on the skinny paintbrush, can you get a wide line? Try add, adding lots of um, watercolor paint to get a dark color and then try adding just plain water on top of the paper and move that paint around and see what you can come up with. And if you discover anything really neat, two colors mixing together or overlapping, let your table know. Show them what you've discovered. And this is our activity for today, second grade, to work as a community and try out a variety of art media. So now we're going to work together as a community to clean up 
So even though you might not have made the mess at your table, you're going to clean that up and I'm gonna show you how to clean up each station and what you should do. And some stations will be easier to clean up and others will be a little bit more difficult to clean up. And that's okay, we're working as a community and thinking of others and working as a group to get the room cleaned up. Good job, second grade.